You are now listening to O1 Radio, the talk show podcast station. Bringing to you daily health and information. Where daily health is viewed as an ever-changing reality. All information and resources are based on the opinions of the host unless otherwise noted. All information is intended to motivate, encourage, and inspire a positive change and a healthier lifestyle. No information on this site should be used to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease or condition. Listeners are to make their own health decisions after consulting with their health care provider. This is your daily health. Welcome once again to all the new listeners and my day ones. This is your Let's Talk. Daily Health, and today we will be discussing migraines and headaches, which a lot of people experience and go through, and have been going through for years. I am one of those, so I figure, hey, let's help somebody out. For those who may not know, or can't find the information, or whatever the case may be. But migraines and headaches are a very big problem around the world. A lot of people are suffering and going through some things with it, so... For those who don't know, migraines and headaches, what are they for the one for the lucky ones who don't know? A migraine is a chronic neurological disease characterized by recurrent moderate to severe headaches, often in association with a number of nervous system problems. Now, so a migraine It's a severe throbbing pain, generally experienced on one side of the head, or for those who go through some really, really bad ones, it can be either side or both sides. So who would you talk to about this? You would actually, because the first step would be go to your doctor, talk to your doctor. But more than likely, if they're really disruptive and causing really huge problems within your um, day-to-day activity, they would send you to talk to a specialist so you could do a consult with a neurologist. And they specialize in treating diseases of the nervous system, which includes the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. And uh, oftentimes, people go in and find out that it's more than just a simple headache, that there's some other things going on. So it's very important to Stay on top of your health when it comes to your head, especially. So what are the symptoms? Prodrome, which are changes that indicate an upcoming migraine, which can consist of constipation, mood swings, euphoria, food cravings, increased thirst and urination, frequent yawning, and aura. Symptoms of the nervous system experienced before or during the migraine, which are changes in vision, visual disturbances, changes in sensation and hearing, difficulty speaking, and these can be really, really bad. You really can't function throughout the day like that. Um, With the headache... It's the actual phase of the migraine attack. Pain on one or both sides of the head. Pain that radiates to the jaw. Throbbing or pulsating pain. Accompanied with sensitivity to light, sound, smell, and even touch. There's eye pain, nausea and or vomiting. Blurred vision lightheadedness, and or fainting. So like I said, that can be kind of brutal and we need to know these things. And if you're experiencing these things, definitely talk to the doctor. Now, post-drone, that's the phase that occurs after a migraine attack. And you can experience confusion, mood swings, dizziness, weakness or fatigue, as well as sensitivity, to light and sound. So what causes all of those things? 
A migraine is not attributed to a single specific cause, but various environmental factors and genetics play a role. Further, many risk factors have been identified though. Family history, aging, emotional anxiety, environmental factors such as changes in the weather or altitude, abnormal structures in the brain, imbalance in brain chemicals such as serotonin, hormonal changes in women, and even certain foods or food additives can act as triggers as well. Alcohol assumption, stress, change in sleep patterns, as well as medications such as contraceptive pills. So your birth control can actually play a role in this too, ladies. So how do the doctors diagnose this? Well, diagnosis involves assessment of symptoms and imaging tests to check any abnormalities in the brain, which is always a good thing. Better safe than sorry. So what are the common tests and perhaps procedures that they do? A physical examination, and it's to rule out any other cause that might be causing the symptoms. Blood tests, to examine for infections, blood vessel problems, and toxins in the blood. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI for short. MRI of the brain is performed to check for any abnormal, abnormalities in brain, including tumors and bleeding, amongst other things. A CT scan. It helps to diagnose tumors, infections, and bleeding in the brain. CSF analysis, that's cerebrospinal fluid analysis. It's to check for infection in the spinal cord and brain by examining the spinal fluid. Hopefully no one would have to go through that, but should that come up, it's better safe than sorry. So what treatment can we expect after diagnosis? Treatment helps control symptoms and prevent attacks. There's medication, therapy, as well as nutrition. So some of that, part of that treatment is going to be some self-help there. You know, we always have to do our part along with the doctors to get better and take preventive measures. So your tips for prevention what can you do? Avoid foods or activities that trigger migraine. Exercise regularly, but avoid strenuous activities, including intense exercises. Look, I know summer is coming and you want to hit the gym hard. You want to hit the park hard, whatever it is, however it is you do, you might want to try to kick it up a notch because like many, we got to wait to the last minute to try to drop weight after winter when summer is kind of up on us which will kind of entice us to just hit it really hard but control 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 don't hurt yourself because you do not want a migraine or a headache from too much intense exercising now the next tip is maintain a recommended body weight this is a healthy body weight so if you're trying to lose weight and everything, do it on the healthy side. Don't do anything extreme that'll throw your body off because your body will react and tell you. And it could trigger a migraine. Also, keep yourself well hydrated, especially seeing that the summer months are upon us. As well as practice the right sleep-wake cycle. Get as much sleep as you can and do it on the regular. I know life itself will bring you challenges when it comes to sleep. If you have insomnia, that's a challenge all, up, all on its own. But try as much as possible to get regular sleep. That's all that means. 
Now, the next tip is eat your meals at the right time. Do me a favor. We've all been guilty of this. Do not eat and lay down and go to sleep for the night. It's not good on any front. I know I've done this and suffered from it. So, learn from my mistake. Okay, so next is learn to manage stress. Now, you can do this by several different ways, like therapy. Um, you can talk to a therapist. You can talk to a psychiatrist. You can do yoga. You can find something that you like to do um, that re actually reduces stress, like meditation, for example. And last but not least, avoid strenuous activities including intense exercise. I had to say that again because summer is right here. And I know like many ladies, we are crushing to get that summer bod together. Don't hurt yourself. It's not worth it like that. And I, fellas, I'm not going to leave you out either because I know you guys, you want to look good as well. But if you have issues with migraines and headaches, don't do the excess intense trying to get the big guns and be chocolate thunder or vanilla thunder or whatever the case may be. Don't risk your health trying to be extra fine. Take care of yourself because these headaches are no joke. Migraines, they're no joke and they can be debilitating. And I don't want that for anyone. So our topic today has been migraines and headaches. If you're having problems, please go talk to your doctor um, seek a specialist, a neurologist to be exact, and take care of yourselves. And this information is not only just for you, but for anyone that you know um, and love and you want to help. You may notice symptoms from somebody else. Sometimes we notice other things with other people before we notice them within ourselves. So be helpful to those around you. If you notice these things, help them out. Give them some information. Your favorite podcast site.